Hi everyone, my name is Ernie, and I have a great interest and in perhaps even a burgeoning love affair with uh, mainframe operating system emulation, especially the kind that you can do from the privacy of your own PC or even from a very inexpensive virtual private server that you can rent from uh, all sorts of places, including Linode. What I have right now is three separate mainframe operating systems up and running on my PC. And these operating systems come from the actual source of the operating systems that were uh, created for um, the academic environment or the business environment from places like uh, IBM, obviously, or the University of Michigan, or even from McGill University up in Canada. And through the magic of a bunch of different hardware emulation products that are, again, free, through the, um, the, the great generosity of very, very talented programmers around the world, uh, operating system emulators or hardware emulators like Hercules or Sim390. These operating systems can be um, enjoyed from uh, the privacy of your own environment without having to seek out some kind of access to a, an, a currently functioning system somewhere, like from some bank or insurance company or, or what have you. Oftentimes, and this has been the, my case back in the day, uh, the university that I was attending gave me an account and said, all right, you can use, we well, have to use uh, our mainframe access to do things like class scheduling and various and sundry things, and that was back in the 80s. And we don't do that anymore. Things aren't done quite that way, except that in maybe a few cases, they still are. For the most part, it's all done through a web interface. But these are actual operating systems that give you a text-only interface, something very robust, something very um, kind of a throwback to the past, and maybe in some respects an actual pleasant throwback to the past. I personally like the text environment. I think it's easy on my eyes. I think it's easy to understand. And um, in many respects, it's actually a, a lot less demanding on on the systems because there's no graphics that need to be uh, presented. No, no pretty screens. Very few pretty screens. Anyhow, what I intend to do with this series of videos that I'm going to create is go into the details of operating the, uh, the mainframe emulations, getting them up and running, how to uh, do basic things like edit text files, how to do programming on them. There's a lot of environments or compilers available on these systems. For instance, there's a number of COBOL environments. There's uh, Fortran, there's PL1, pretty much anything that was available in the time these systems were functioning or popular um, is available to the emulation world. I'll show you where to get the products here for free, and uh, not for free like we're taking. They they are free. They were they're given to the world by people who really wanted to uh, make this stuff available to uh, to a hobbyist environment. And in some cases, I think some of these things may actually be used in a production environment here and there. I will show you how to um, to sign up for a virtual private server. Let's get into the details of what the differences are, how to change the user accounts, how to change the passwords, even how to um, work with the security on the virtual private server. For instance, mine is uh, using Ubuntu. And to be certain that I have no baddies trying to break into things, we'll talk about how to lock down your system so that's fully usable but uh, almost impossible for people to get into that aren't already or who are not invited, as it were. Now, why would we do this philosophically? Well, if you're like me and you have a deep curiosity for all sorts of stuff, especially computing topics, this is really, to me, one of the more esoteric things to do. To be able to have a mainframe operating system functioning right in front of you, and not just a toy now. This is the important thing. These, this is the actual operating systems from the, um, the universities. This is the stuff that they actually use. It's not a version that someone created that looks like it. No, it's actually the OS's. They're, it's the real deal. For instance, uh, the one right here in front, the MVS38J, that is from IBM. And the reason why it's available to us is because that particular version was paid for by the U.S. government at some point in the past, and because of the way the laws are written, it says that, well, it needs to be made available to the taxpayer, to the public, because they paid for it. So MVS 3.8 is out there for our use, and very smart people have put it into a form that allows us to use it with the Hercules hardware emulator. 
Same thing with these two ones in the background that I'll pull to the front. One being MTS and one being something called Music SP. And starting on the right over here at MTS, MTS is the operating system that was created from the University of Michigan Computing Center for the purpose of allowing their students and faculty to have a mainframe environment, but without the university having to pay the tremendous overhead and cost of a full IBM um, MVS system. And IBM was on board with this. They didn't have a problem with them doing that. In fact, I think they actually made it available later on to other uh, users. But the MTS system is very rudimentary, it's, but it functions wonderfully. And it was utilized by a number of universities all around the world and had a great big following until, I guess, the mid-90s when it was replaced with a client server system, for better or worse, probably. The people who were supporting this were retired and no longer around. Same thing over here uh, on this side, the Music SP, which came from McGill University up in Canada uh, in Montreal. It is the multi-user for interactive computing slash system product, hence the Music SP. And that, too, is an operating system for their mainframe environment that was created with the idea that it was going to be a lot easier for users and staff students and so on to utilize something that was geared toward the academic environment than let's say geared toward the business environment which is where IBM put all its its efforts. So the IBM environment, this one down here, the MVS 3.8, when you're working in there it's a little more um, detailed. There's a lot more uh, information presented perhaps a little more complexity than most people in the academic environment want to be bothered with. They can certainly get to it but there was no need. So these other two systems, MTS and Music SP specifically, they were created to, um, to facilitate a, an academic world, and they're great fun to play with. They're all great fun to play with, but I find that Music SP is the most fun. It's the most interactive. It's the most, it holds your hand the best. Uh, to give you an example of what it could look like, I'll give you here. Let's log in to, um, to my instance, uh, music uh, uh, SP that's running on my Nanode virtual private server that I rent for five dollars a month from um, from Linode, which is now owned by Akamai, Akamai, something like that. And for five dollars a month, I get a. Uh, hang on here, let me just get us logged in. For five dollars a month, I have a single CPU, shared CPU, two gigabyte storage environment running Ubuntu that is um, very capable for running several of the mainframe operating systems. It's not working very hard, uh, considering it's usually, you know, considered very tiny, that's what they call it, the Nanode VPS. But that's what it looks like. That's what the actual user would be presented with when they first logged into um, Music SP. Unlike an MTS, MTS is a much more rudimentary system. So when I sign into that, let me do that now, you'll see it's that's it I mean it gives you the command prompt and says well I hope you know what you're doing because at this point forward uh, that's about all you're going to see so different philosophies different approaches to the way people would interact with these mainframe operating systems from the uh, the music SP side much more hand-holding from the MTS side much more command line oriented and uh, the, M the MVS system is a, more of a mixed bag. There are ways in which you can get a menu, give you information, let you see what is out there for you. Um, but I like Music SP because I like, the, uh, I like the comfort of it. It's a comfortable working environment. But anyhow, stick with me on this channel. We're, uh, we're going to delve into each of these, how to how to install them, how to get Hercules up and running, how to do it on a VPS, how to do it just on your own PC without being online. I like the online environment, not because it functions any better than being just on your own computer, but I like the idea that it's online. So it's more, it's more in tune with how things might have been uh, when you were a remote user working on a mainframe environment from, let's say, who knows, a library on the university somewhere versus uh, in your dorm or something to that effect. Uh, we'll get into um, how to make it functional. So if you run into problems installing it, how to fix it and make, make sure it works. The support environment, there's a lot of people out there. There's a lot of people out there on Groups.io. There's a lot of people out there doing great videos 
Uh, Moshix, for instance, who is a professional, and he's been uh, a mainstay in the emulated community, emulation community for, uh, for mainframe systems. Um, yeah, we're going to get into all of it and even try a couple of other operating systems that are really esoteric and may or may not be successful at getting up and running, but we'll try anyway. All right, well, that's the introduction of why um, you might want to do this. It's fun, it's free, and um, I like it. Maybe this is up your alley too. Or if you watch the video and said, oh, this looks boring as get out, well, that's fine because to some people, yeah, it could be terribly boring. And to others, <laughs> like myself, it, uh, it can keep me up all night playing with this stuff. Okay, please subscribe and um, I'll keep the videos coming and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks.